Hello, sir. Welcome to BIL Talks. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, my first question to you is, why financial literacy is important, especially in country like India? So financial literacy is, I think, one of the most important things uh, for any developing or country, particularly India, because we have a huge population, but statistics show us that the financial literacy percentages are very low. With this kind of a framework and in a growing economy, we need people to be more financial lit financially literate if we see the current framework, which include which has actually made a lot of things electronic. You know, a simple thing like a bank account can be operated electronically. People need to understand all the products which are available. With people complaining about limited investment avenues, there is so much. There are so many products available where people can invest money, which are safe and secure. But with the lack of literacy, such people would always face constraints. So it is important that this is this be encouraged, and any organization which uh, provides literacy, especially in the financial sector, should be provided some additional incentive so that we can really grow it and make it mass. So we at BSC are also particularly uh, interested in this, and throughout the year we keep conducting programs and events to encourage financial literacy through our trading institute as well as through our investor protection program. Right. So uh, the financial landscape is changing. I think you would agree to that. But according to you, are the three emerging tech trends that will revolutionize the financial institution? So, you know, of the, there are multiple trends which are actually taking place. Uh, the significant ones, if I were to say, are uh, one is clearly fintech. Fintech has really caught on because, I mean, essentially it's a convergence of finance and technology, mm -hmm. which is a very important uh, uh, subject, which is, you know, which has really come up and which has come up in, in the recent past. I mean, when I say in the next, uh, in the past three to four years, the other big areas are big data and artificial intelligence because these are the other areas which uh, you know certainly we have found there's a significant traction and you know there's a lot of interest among the new generation so as you mentioned artificial intelligence so from traditional trading to online and now ais is this a technological change or a culture change uh, so you know if, if you were to go back into history there is always a technology change which once it permeates down into the population, then it becomes a cultural change. We've seen this happen when, you know, the uh, traditional forms of transport like a bullet cart were, uh, were replaced with uh, motor cars, etc., etc. So that's how it happens. So initially, any technology would be difficult, would be expensive, but how the, the real challenge for any technology is how does it get dispersed and at what cost? So as long as the costs are reasonable, then the the wide the wider adoption of such technologies becomes very easy. Yes, sir. How will humankind adopt to this change or the whole robot revolution? So you know, this is uh, again an interesting concept. If you see again going back into history, you know, there have been times when uh, there's a when as industries developed and I'm going into the industrial era you know they took away some of the jobs and evidence shows that while they took away some of the jobs they created some new kind of jobs okay so that's exactly what's going to happen now with more and more financialization there is there are the, it's not that the jobs are going away in fact a WFE report says that for every job loss to our automation, three new jobs are created. So given that, and that's in a, in a intuitive sense, that's also true. For example, if you see uh, Flipkart, I mean, let's just take this example. Post Flipkart and Amazon, what's happened is you've got an increase in delivery. 
so the logistic companies the logistics aspect has also become a very big big area for employment of people so i believe that with robotics and technology the old jobs while they get automated there will be new kind of jobs which will be created in the economy and which will also require some enhanced skills because essentially what's technology do it's just replacing manual repeatable actions into automation and that's what is going to continue to take place and we are all used to such minor changes yes there will be some more disruptive changes which would come but it would certainly result in more new jobs that's a new thing so with more than 40 million trades executed on a monthly basis bsc must maintain top performance and round the clock availability for the business system that underpin its tra- trading activity how challenging is that so you know the interesting aspect is that as a, as a stock exchange we are a more of a technology company and that's been the fact for us for several years and the way we see it is that that's the trend which would occur across industry so you know just to give another example artificial intelligence eventually is said what what is said is that there may be at some stage no need for doctors to do diagnosis because i mean you know you can the sensors and all the other uh, technology which would be available and uh, which is just currently being developed or tested so this issue would be taken up similarly uh, for bsc we invested heavily in technology so as of today amongst the in the exchange space within the country and even globally we have one of the best and robust technologies we have speed of 6 microseconds response time which makes us the fastest exchange in the world we have a huge capacity of 500000 orders per second which again gives us you know a significant uh, technological backbone so as as i said we have invested heavily in technology we believe we are the best exchange with technology in the country and in the world we can, we are certainly we believe we are the fastest exchange and we are competing with with all the global exchanges as well as india so bsc is going to enter commodity market would you like to elaborate on that you know this is again an interesting aspect because we have been ready for commodities for several years now but uh, you know in between there was this merger which took place between sebi and power markets commission pursuant to that then you know we were waiting for the regulations which have all come in now and based on which uh, sebi has announced that uh, exchanges existing exchanges can also start trading commodities so we are awaiting the final approvals from sebi and we are confident which we will get and we intend to start commodities trading on the 1st of october the other aspect is that in any case if you know a gift city exchange which is india imx uh, that is already trading a lot of commodities so we are confident that we have the technology and the wherewithal to commence trading in commodities so as you know fintech is a rapidly evolving sector and bsc has bsc institute has a full fledged masters program in fintech so how do you think this the institution is enhancing financial literacy i think this is a very good uh, course which would be beneficial for students as well as industry because you know i i i mean in my knowledge there have been some private initiatives because i understand that ibm has been providing some kind of some technological courses etc you know similarly there will be other organizations but as an institute this is also a very important thing very relevant because typically what happens is people try to correlate institutes like bti as more of mba or you know those kind of institutes but here for the first time you know this is also a very good convergence so i'm sure it would be very useful and i'm sure you there will be a lot of students who will be interested in such kind of courses which will help them more what would be your career advice to the students so see from our perspective you know a few things that every student should understand that as we as technology evolves it's no more only 
finance that one needs to look at. All students should also gear up to understand technology. Now, understanding technology is not exactly being technology qualified. You know, you don't need an engineering degree to understand technology. But one needs to understand how technology can be used for business processes and for businesses. And that's where with the advent of uh, AI or big data, every organization has a lot of data. But if the business managers who are down the line don't understand how to use that, they may not be in a competitive sense, uh, in a position to compete with their counterpart. So it's very important that you know one understands data, one understands how what is artificial intelligence, how it can be used, as, and also all new technology trends. So one needs to be more literate about technology trends as well. So, you know, there is so much happening, things like blockchain, things, I mean, just too much happening. So, I mean, I believe that the future student is a student who has to be totally aware of all these aspects, including social media. So students, I mean, I know it's, it's, a, it's a big call, but we are all touching social media. For example, all students must be on some Facebook or WhatsApp or you know any of these social media. So it's not that we are already, a lot of this is already touching us. It's just that how do we start using the same WhatsApp for business communication? Can we do that? So you know, those are the points I'm trying to make. So in that sense, I think the future student, it's not difficult, it's possible. And with that smartness, I'm sure, uh, you know, one can certainly enhance the career. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.